Mock draft season is in full swing, and on this edition of Seattle Seahawks Today, we will go over the latest seven-round mock draft from ESPN NFL draft analyst Matt Miller. He picked every selection for every pick of every team in the draft, and what we're going to do on today's show is focus in on the Seahawks, show you the Seahawks picks, provide some reaction and analysis. Also, what Matt Miller had to say as well about the Seahawks picks. We'll go over all of that and more coming up in just a bit. Tyler Jones here with you. Thanks for joining us. We are your off-season headquarters here on Seattle Seahawks today, and we are inching oh so close to our next milestone of 51 and a half thousand subscribers. But we need your help to get there. As uh, we are just over 300 away from reaching that next milestone. The latest happenings in your favorite team. All off-season long from the draft, trades, free agency, and more. We got you covered. Our breaking news segments, our live shows, mailbags, everything in between. It's all right here in Seattle Seahawks today. Subscribe now. You'll be glad you did. Let's go over the Seahawks draft picks. Kind of set the scene for you here. As the Seahawks pick at 16 overall, do not have a second-round pick. They have one third-round pick after the Sam Howell trade at 81. Then they have two fourth-round picks at 102 and 118, and then they wrap up with two sixth-round picks, one at 179, 192, and their final pick in the draft is in the seventh round at 235. So with the Seahawks' 16th pick in the 2024 NFL Draft, ESPN's Matt Miller is projecting that the Seahawks go with Washington offensive tackle slash guard, probably guard for Seattle, Troy Faltanu with the 16th overall selection. Let's tell you more about uh, Matt Miller's choice here of uh, going with uh, Faltanu to Seattle. The Seahawks depth chart has zero left guards listed right now. So I have Faltanu, a college left tackle sliding inside where he has the talent to be an all-pro guard. Lining up Charles Cross and Faltanu on the left side immediately boosts the run game and keeps Geno Smith cleaner for deep passes. New offensive coordinator Ryan Grubb loves. Faltanu played it for Grubb at Washington, too. The Seahawks are always seeking value when it comes to the draft, and Faltanu is my number 16 overall player, so Seattle can fill a need without reaching. So you're telling me the Seahawks are getting an all-pro player at this pick. No-brainer here. I know some of you want the Seahawks to trade down and pick up multiple picks, but if you can guarantee me that this is an all-pro pick for the Seahawks, at 16 overall, then I'm scoring that as a win for Seattle to go with uh, Troy Faltano here with this selection. Uh, first team all Pac-12 selection this past year, Pac-12 Offensive Lineman of the Year. Mel Kuyper's got him as the number one offensive guard in this year's draft. I mean, this would be a very good fit for Seattle. He's already been in the scheme playing for Ryan Grubb and Scott Huff. He'll be teaching the guys how this works. His pass block grade was outstanding last year, 88.8. Run block grade, 61.9, close to 1,000 snaps. I think this would be a good pick for the Seattle Seahawks, and no one should complain about it if this is what the Seahawks ultimately go with. So, answer our pin comment today. Do you agree with Matt Miller? Should the Seahawks draft Troy Faltano with this pick? Type Y for yes, N for no. Weigh in the comment section. Let us know what you think of the selection. Today's show is sponsored by Game Time. Game Time, the place to go for the best seats, the lowest prices guaranteed. Whether you're talking tickets to sporting events, concerts, theater productions, comedy shows, and more, Game Time has got it all, folks. And here's how it works. You choose the event you want to go to, choose the seat, and you can see if you like that seat or not. Look for the flash deals to find the seat that's perfect for you. And then, just within a matter of moments, you're checking out with Apple Pay, Google Pay, Venmo, all major credit card providers. They got it all for you. They make it so easy. And on top of that, we're offering a great deal for you. $20 off on your first purchase when you use the promo code CHATSPORTS. The link is in the comments and description of today's video. I've used it to go to all sorts of events like baseball games, basketball games, football games. You can, too. Maybe you want to be a part of the Mariners' opening day weekend this weekend. Download game time today. Terms and conditions do apply. 
promo code chat sports the link is in the comments and description of today's video for twenty dollars off download game time today let's move ahead to the third round now the 81st overall pick and matt miller projects the seahawks going with university of texas linebacker jalen ford here's more from miller it's a little early for ford based on feedback from nfl teams but the seahawks need a young linebacker for new coach Mike McDonald, to train him into his Roquan Smith. Ford is special in pass coverage with six interceptions over the past two years. If you're telling me that he's the next Roquan Smith, then I'm sold. If this is what's going to be the case, like Matt Miller's talking about here, you are running to the podium to deliver the card that you're getting Jalen Ford on your team. Now, more than likely, he's probably not Roquan Smith because Roquan Smith's the best middle linebacker in all of football. But he would fill a need, and he would help when it comes to pass coverage. And we've talked a lot about that Mike McDonald with this defense is changing things up, right? That the Seahawks are reinventing themselves of focusing on guys that can cover, that play the linebacker position. That what we saw previously with Bobby and Jordan, those guys weren't good enough when it came to pass coverage. And if you're going to play for Mike McDonald, if you're going to be a Terrell Dodson, if you're going to be a Jerome Baker, you got to be able to be well in coverage. And those guys are, Jalen Ford would fit that mold for that. Last year, ended up with 102 tackles, one sack, one forced fumble, two pass breakups, uh, would immediately see playing time, get in the rotation, essentially be the replacement for Devin Bush on this Seahawks team if they were to go that route. So should the Seahawks draft Jalen Ford? Type D for draft. P for pass. Weigh in the comments section. Tell us what you think if Seattle should draft the Texas Longhorn Jalen Ford or not. Now let's go to the fourth round here as Miller's projecting the Seahawks go with Utah safety Cole Bishop at 102 overall with their first of two fourth round picks. When you look at Cole Bishop, this is a guy that's a versatile defender. He's very strong. He can do multiple things. Um, the Seahawks, I know that they have Rayshon Jenkins and Julian Love and, and company and all that, but they're going to need more than that. I think you get a guy like Cole Bishop, this is a guy that could compete for playing time and could see the field potentially right away. Then their other fourth-round pick, the Seahawks go corner, and they get Cam Hart from Notre Dame with their 118th selection here. And you look at the Seahawks situation when it comes to the corner spot, all right, you got Devin Witherspoon coming off a strong rookie campaign. Rick Wollin had a bad second year where he struggled tackling. Still trying to figure out what the roles are of Mike Jackson and Trey Brown. But you need to invest in another young corner. Cam Hart could be a good fit potentially there. He's physical and he's smooth, which are two traits are very important for that cornerback position. Then we skip ahead to the sixth round. Seahawks don't have a fifth round pick. That's where we find Matt Miller projecting the Seahawks go with UConn defensive end Eric Watts with the 179th overall pick in the sixth round. The good thing about Eric Watts, despite being projected to go in the sixth round like this, is that he still looks the part. He plays the part of a prototypical defensive end. So you're getting a dude, okay, with this sixth, sixth round pick, but it doesn't take away from his potential uh, of what he might turn into. Another sixth-round pick for Seattle. This time they go with Michigan linebacker Michael Barrett with the 192nd overall selection in the sixth round. Another linebacker for Seattle here. A real physical demeanor, what Michael Barrett brings to the table here. Uh, this guy is a is just a beast, if, if we're going to be honest with you. I mean, his measurables, you got to see for yourself. They're pretty tremendous. And then their final pick in the seventh round, the Seahawks end up going with Michigan tight end A.J. Barner with the 234th, 35th pick uh, in the seventh round there. Uh, Matt Miller, with this pick, I think you fill a position of need, you need another tight end, and it doesn't cost you a whole lot. I don't hate that pick. You look at Barner, this is a big target as a zone beater. And teams love to play zone. So this could be a mismatch potentially if you use him effectively. So with that said, I'll give you my grade on this mock draft here in just a second. want to hear from you guys. How did 
the worldwide leader do with their Seahawks mock draft from Matt Miller. Put your grades in, A, B, C, D, or F. I'll reveal my grade here in just a second. I want to hear from you guys first. Let us know in the comments section below. My grade for what Matt Miller did for Seattle here, I'll go B+. A couple of reasons why I went B+. Plus here. One, this is very defense heavy. And it does a good job of addressing needs. But if we take a historical context, all right, how John Schneider does things, they don't always draft based on need. They draft based on best available more times than not. Now, sure, there's some glaring needs the Seahawks need to address, but I think it was a little too focused based on need rather than best available uh, in this draft. But you found some quality players. Uh, I think that if this was the draft for the Seahawks, we could sit here and be content. Would it be exciting? Would it be an A draft? No, but it would pass the smell test, and it would be good enough, if you will, for the Seahawks to go forward from here with these selections, as you can see, rolling through your screen right now from uh, ESPN's Matt Miller. So, with that, we'll have plenty of more draft coverage ahead here on the channel. We're doing our own mock drafts. We're reacting to what the experts like Matt Miller and others are projecting for your Seattle Seahawks as well. Buckle up, folks, because this next month ahead, the countdown to the draft, we're going to be all over it here on Seattle Seahawks today. Subscribe now. Stay up to date with the latest happenings on your favorite team all offseason long as we continue to get you ready for the NFL draft. We'll do so right here on Seattle Seahawks today. Subscribe now, youtube.com slash Seahawks TV, and we'll see you next time.